Good afternoon and welcome to The Rundown. I am your host, Captivating Christian, and here are some of your top stories for today, the 22nd of October. Russia, Iran have obtained voter data in the election interference campaign. The director of national intelligence, John Radcliffe, made the announcement on Wednesday. And in world news... Deaths from Nigeria's protests now at 56 people. And San Francisco passes the Karen Act to combat racist 911 calls. The Board of Supervisors unanimously voted to let people sue those who call the police for discriminatory reasons. And Sergeant Jonathan Matterling claims that he is also a victim in Breonna Taylor's death and cast the blame on Kenneth Walker. Miami police officer facing disciplinary action for wearing a pro-Trump mask near voting area. And Rudy Giuliani claims that Barat Tunny Trap is a hit job to distract voters from Hunter Biden's laptop scandal after Sasha Baron Cohen tricked him into going to a hotel room with an actress who filmed him. Let's get to the news. Senior National Security Officers alerted the American public on Wednesday that Iran and Russia both have obtained voter data in their efforts to interfere with the 2020 U.S. election. The data can be used by foreign actors to an attempt to communicate false information to registered voters that they hope will cause confusion, sow chaos, and undermine your confidence in American democracy. Radcliffe also announced that Iran was separately behind a series of threatening emails that were found to be sent this week to Democratic voters, which he said was designed to intimidate voters, incite social unrest, and damage President Trump. Florida's law enforcement and the FBI previously had said that they were investigating the threatening emails, allegedly sent outside of the United States to registered Democrats. The emails claim to be from members of the Proud Boys, according to authorities, something that the group denies. President Donald Trump, in the first presidential debate, stirred up controversy when he responded to a question about whether he condemned white supremacists. He told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. Many argue that at that moment, he could serve to energize the fringe members of the group to carry out acts of violence against opponents of the president. The FBI director, Christopher Wray, separately appeared at the news conference to assure Americans that the Bureau will not tolerate attempts at foreign interference in the U.S. elections and would alert the American people when appropriate when it discovers such activity. The White House reacted late Wednesday, taking a shot at former President Barack Obama and the president's election opponent in the process. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to The Rundown. I'm your host, once again, Captivating Christian, and this is a part of the segment that I like to basically give my personal commentary on the stories for this afternoon. But first, let's get some house business out of the way. Welcome to all new subscribers and watchers of the channel. Hopefully you like what you're seeing. Uh, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe. That's it. Doesn't cost a thing. And share it if you must um, to let other people know what's going on here at Cap Hill. To my state reps that are you in the chat, it's always great to see you. So let's get started. All right. So the first um, item up for bid is, of course, the... uh, FBI, along with the National uh, Intelligence 
community basically saying that the Russians as well as Iran have already been um, dipping their toes into this 2020 election by gathering data uh, from Democrats as well as many Republicans, phone numbers, emails, and anything else to basically deter us all from voting. FBI, open up! So pretty much um, the FBI is, know that they're doing it and so does the uh, intelligence community, but it always is up to the commander in chief whether or not we actually do something. Uh oh, retard alert! Uh oh, retard alert! Because we can know all day that something is going on and something is not right, but it's up to the president who's actually in charge of, you know, upholding democracy, of upholding or defending the United States to actually give the go ahead whether or not the FBI or the intelligence community, the CIA actually goes after these Russian and Iranian bots. But, you know, if it was any other president, they would be like, Bitch, I hope the fuck you do. You'll be a dead son of a bitch. I tell you that. Jesus Christ. But this particular president, we know he's a You're freaking psychopath. And, and he wouldn't dare go against the Russians. Who? Donald Trump? What, bitch? He would dare go against the Russians. The Russians would tell all of his business and he'd be in trouble. Oh, hell no. So he knows better than to tell on the Russians. But anyway, yeah. So pretty much that they have kind of infiltrated into the election system enough to be able to garner people's information as far as their phone numbers and email accounts to send emails. Uh, to uh, potential voters, um, probably even call some. So my suggestion is if you don't recognize the number, do not answer it. If you don't recognize the email, do not open it. Um, and just kind of staying clear for a few days until this is all over. Um, as we know, this president will do anything he can to maintain his power. So, uh, we all know who we're dealing with here. Why are you being a dickhead fool? Stop being a dickhead. So just enjoy the drama while it lasts. Because what will happen is eventually, come November 4th, the game will be... That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. However, unfortunately, we're still stuck with him until January, even after the election. Which would be definitely boring. But nonetheless, hopefully we all go out and vote, 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 vote early, send your mail-in ballots, do whatever you need to, because this type of behavior is long overdue and should have been canceled a long time ago. I need to definitely wake up from this nightmare <laughs> and actually get to something uh, that I recognize. At least 56 people have died in Nigeria in two weeks of protests against police brutality, with 38 of them killed on Tuesday alone as the government begins a crackdown. Human rights groups Amnesty International say that victims in the protest and thugs who were allegedly hired by the authorities to confront the protesters for the Nigeria group say that in an email statement, in many cases, the security forces had used excessive force in attempt to control or stop the protest. This particular story is an international story that we're dealing with talking about um, Nigeria and what's going on uh, in Nigeria. Now, um, part of this, of course, is a... 
because we need to listen and pay attention. But the other part of this is something that I've spoke about before, excuse me, my eye was itching, but something that I've spoken about before of how there is no connection. They made sure that they kind of cut the connection between uh, the black or African-American, whatever you want to label yourself on this side of the, um, on this side of the continent compared to the Africans who are in Africa, that there is, there is a huge disconnect and there in which when things happen either in America or in Africa, we become so disconnected from it that it really doesn't get any attention and we really don't honor up the kind of what are you doing, stop that before we detract any kind of support or supplies and or diamonds and or anything else. Um, that we give to you uh, if you continue to do this, almost like a but we don't have that unfortunately we have some kind of systematic Dark Vader who basically has us fighting against each other so they can do certain things uh, to the Americans and they can do certain things to the Africans and we can kind of go along our daily days thinking oh well that has nothing to do with me Bruh. but in actuality it has everything to do with you because the same the same police brutality they're now facing over here we've been facing for months Shit. even years and even from that end it ain't too much coming from as far as hey you know, stop doing this for we take our resources and go elsewhere. But unfortunately enough, um, already reported 50 some odd people have been dying uh, due to these protesters and police and local people with weapons have been uh, teaming up with the police to basically uh, gun down protesters. Something similar to what's kind of going on here. But definitely there, it's on a whole different scale. But it definitely needs attention nonetheless because it is something that uh, is important and needs to stop. Uh, there is no reason for, um, you know, we can chew gum and walk at the same time. So we can be concerned about our elections here. Boy. And we can also be concerned about what's going on to the people in a, a land where we come from boy uh, you know and as much as we talk about oh you know that dumb comment that that uh it was at this moment jackson that he fucked up that uh mr 50 cent that's why i played that clip said about how he knows trump is a racist and don't like black people but he likes his taxes the same person who um, can watch a black man die in cold blood on a video and think feel nothing for it to look at the president and go, well, he has good taxes. I like to save my money. But aren't you the same one who uh, filed for bankruptcy so you wouldn't have to pay child support and took your names and credits off of the Terry, the Terry, the TV series you created uh, or what played a part of uh, in power on stars? right so i'm really trying to figure out what the hell's going on but anyway i say all that to say this we need to be just as connected as any other group from their homeland are like the chinese people who live in the united states compared to the chinese people who live in china they are still they still have some homeland connection they are the same with italy it's the same with people in the jewish community they have a connection to israel even though they may have lived in the United States their whole life, there's still a connection there. We need to start building those bridges to actually bring awareness to what's going on in Africa and even using our resources to help them and vice versa um, to actually bring a stop to all of this um, kind of violence against us because uh, it's all just pure trash and it really needs to stop. That's all I have to say about that.
San Francisco's Board of Supervisors unanimously approved a measure on Tuesday aimed at cracking down at racist 911 calls, a phenomenon that has been increasingly documented on social media. The caution against racial and exploitative non-emergency act, otherwise known as the Karen Act for short, gives people who believe they have been the subject of a 911 call placed with the intent to discriminate the right to sue the caller in civil court. It names invoked the Karen memes this year shorthand for white women weaponizing her privilege usually with heaping dose of prejudice against people of color the ordinance was introduced by supervisor shaman walton who thanks his colleagues at tuesday's meeting for unanimously sponsoring it the black and indigenous people of color have a right to go about their daily activities without being threatened by someone calling 911 on them due to their racial bias. We do not want what happened to Emmett Till in 1955 or the long history of false accusations of black men and boys in this country due to weaponizing law enforcement to threaten, terrorize, or sometimes even kill them. Fulton is the only black person on the board of supervisors proposed the measure in July, no longer after a white woman in San Francisco made national headlines by calling the police on a Filipino man writing Black Lives Matter in chalk on his own property. The incident, like so many others, was captured on video and went viral on social media. Walton's ordinance applies to all people discriminated against based on their race, color, ancestry, ethnicity, national origin, place of birth, sex, age, religion, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, weight, or height. Efforts to combat racist 911 calls are happening on a state level. Two California's assemblymen have introduced a bill last month that would make such discriminatory 911 calls a hate crime. And in this particular story, all I can say is, um, yeah, and that's basically because some smart people in San Francisco, one smart black man in San Francisco finally decided to take it upon himself to create legislation, even if it's on a city level, to where in which when people call 911, these Karens call 911, it would, um, the person that they call on can now sue them. Okay, uh, for calling 911 in a discriminatory manner, um, <clears throat> and it's it's a start. I mean, it should have already been enacted, but hell, it's here. Oh hell no! So I am definitely grateful that um, <clears throat> somebody has taken the initiative to say, hey, you know. These are happening way too rampant. We know what happens when the police call. They get gun happy and somebody ends up dying. So let's kind of limit that the best way we can. And if that means at this point that you can sue the pants off of a Karen or a Ken when they call 911, then so be it. Sue the pants off their asses. Take them for every little dime they have. Then maybe they'll stop calling. Let's try that. But anyway, so proud of that because um, yeah, it's really gotten out of hand. They call for no reason. So definitely kudos to this man who has started a movement, even so that many cities are looking into making uh, calling 911 on people in, in a racist kind of discriminatory manner uh, can also be labeled as a hate crime. Now that's something. Uh, because hate crimes are federal 
and then we're talking big time. So, you know, hey, every little step is a giant leap. Um, so I'm, I'm not mad at all. I don't give a fuck. Uh, and I don't care, uh, you know, how they may feel about it. I don't give a fuck. Because it's about, it's long overdue. Um, so long overdue. I don't even care anymore. Uh, these people have a right to sue uh, after their character has been undermined. Uh, have they've been, you know, gone through the task of the police being called and then them having to defend themselves? Uh, social media seems to be helping in that regard. However, not helping enough because these people are still and still doing it. Even though they lose their jobs, somebody still turns around and hires them because they also agree with their uh, sentiment. Boy. So this way, at least if you do get fired and you're able to get another job because somebody hires your disgustingly bigoted behind, Jesus you could still pay that restitution, though. <laughs> and so as long as you can pay that restitution, I guess that's all that matters, huh? Yeah. So... Like I said, I don't care. Let them sue them, sue them all. Um, and then maybe they'll stop or they'll start to really pay attention and understand that they can't just be calling the cops on just any and everybody because they feel like it when their privilege seems to be uh, pressed upon. And I In his first interview since barging into the home of 26-year-old Breonna Taylor in March, Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly of the Louisville Police Department said that he would have done things differently if he were able to redo that night. He would have entered Taylor's home sooner. We expected that Brianna was going to be there by herself. That's why we gave her so much time. And in my opinion, that was a mistake. The 47-year-old cop told Good Morning America's co-anchor Michael Strahan in a two-hour long interview. Mattingly's reasoning was that had cops entered her apartment faster, her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, a licensed gun owner, wouldn't have had time to grab his weapon. After months of protests across the country and demands that the officers be fired and criminally charged, Tonight, for the first time, Officer Jonathan Mattingly, one of the officers who carried out that search warrant at Breonna Taylor's apartment and fired his weapon six times, is speaking out exclusively to ABC News and the Louisville Courier Journal. There were there have been marches, there have been protests. What was your feelings watching all that unfold after this? Mostly frustration because there was so much disinformation out. This is not relatable to a George Floyd. This is nothing like it. It's not an Ahmaud Arbery. It's nothing like it. It's not a race thing like people want to try to make it to be. It's not. This is a point where we were doing our job. We return fire. This is not us going hunting somebody down. This is not kneeling on a neck. This is nothing like that. Mattingly insisting the incident was not about race, but police procedure. And earlier today, nearly three weeks after that grand jury hearing, a judge now allowing all 12 jurors to speak publicly about the proceedings. One juror releasing a statement saying the grand jury was not presented any charges other than the three wanton endangerment charges against Detective Hankison, adding that they did not have homicide offenses explained to them. Officer Mattingly says he and the other officers announced themselves that night. Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, investigators say, shot him in the leg when the officers barged into the apartment. We announced, we waited. Walker telling investigators he fired because he didn't know who was bursting through the door. Police body camera video showing Mattingly later getting help. Brianna Taylor would be pronounced dead inside the apartment. She's done. 
We'll keep one person here on her. An autopsy confirming she died of multiple gunshot wounds. An FBI ballistics analysis later determining that there was one fatal shot that hit Taylor that came from Detective Miles Cosgrove's 40 caliber weapon. A grand jury last month bringing no charges in Taylor's death. Officer Brett Hankison, one of the officers involved, was charged with allegedly endangering neighbors when he opened fire, but not in connection with Taylor's death. He has pleaded not guilty. Next story about uh, Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly. Um, you know, okay, here we go with the, oh, you know, it's not my fault that that black woman died. It's that black man's fault because that, that the black man had pulled out that gun and shot at us. She would still be alive today. It's his fault. I blame him. We all blame him. I've been a victim too. It's funny how when Manny's does something, they always want to play the victim after they cause the problem. It's almost taking it all the way back when they go, oh, well, it's not my fault. I didn't have nothing to do with slavery, but you benefit from slavery. You benefited from slavery and you didn't have no problem taking those benefits, but you have a problem taking responsibility for the benefits that you took. Same incidents here. So now all of a sudden the story has changed. Before they said Brianna Taylor <clears throat> was by herself and they knew she was by herself. So if you knew she was by herself the whole damn time, did you need a whole narcotics unit to go busting in the door? Or did you, like I've always been saying, had that whole narcotics unit bust through that door secretly because you knew or you thought you knew that there was drugs and money in that apartment? And that's really what you was going for. Oh, hell no. <clears throat> and you were totally surprised and caught off guard when y'all got shots fired back at you all because your intentions was to go in there silently probably even murk her anyway, but rob her nonetheless. But because you got met with fire back at you when you didn't respond, because there's no way that if you said police, he would have fired the gun. It just doesn't make any logical sense that if he's a licensed gun owner, that if you said police freeze, he would have still fired his weapon. He fired his weapon because y'all never said who you were. You went in there on some tactical army uh, shit like a bunch of penis. And what happened was when you got close enough where he could see where y'all was going, he fired at your asses. And one of you got hit and then y'all just berated the place with bullets everywhere um, like you were back in Iraq or somewhere. Bruh. That's really what happened. Um, the whole plan got foiled because, again, it was a robbery gone wrong. Y'all was looking for drugs and money because the guy you apprehended, her ex-boyfriend, you thought he was some big-time drug dealer and he had money stashed somewhere. And how would you know that if you wasn't following him and knowing his whereabouts? So you knew he had money, but you didn't know where it was stashed and you thought it was at Breonna Taylor's place. The reason why you... Uh, falsified those documents to even get the no-knock warrant from the judge is so you can do that old undercover robbery that went wrong. That's what it was. It's my opinion, of course, not saying that it's totally factual, but all the evidence for me points to, uh, oops, yeah, y'all thought y'all was getting this, give this big old kingpin and kind of getting him away from his stash so you can go and rob him. That's why I think that you also knew that he was apprehended earlier that morning. So you thought you was gonna sneak into Breonna Taylor's apartment where he was possibly staying, steal his cash and his drugs, and you know, do whatever with it. I don't know, give it to, I guess, his competitor? I, I have no idea what they was planning to do to it. But I definitely feel like, yeah, this was some kind of botched up robbery going wrong. I really do.
Hey, this is Captain Raiden Christian here to remind you to tune in to Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And be sure to join Jay Wilson, Rebel Sun, the official King Pain, Conscious TV, and Captivating Christian this and every Thursday at 6.45 Central Standard Time, 7.45 Eastern Standard Time for the Gentleman's Panel. But we are not afraid to go there and discuss an array of topics. See you there. On Tuesday, Miami, Florida police officer was photographed wearing a pro-Trump face mask while voting at the city's government center. Most states restrict campaigning for any candidate within a certain distance from a polling place, and many states extend those restrictions to wearing any clothing, buttons, or other apparel that promotes a candidate. Now, Florida being Florida, it isn't illegal to wear a face mask or anything else that shows support for a candidate while voting, but the officer in question did clearly violate department policy and will be facing disciplinary actions. The Miami Herald reports that the officer was spotted and photographed by the chairman of the Miami-Dade Democratic Party. The police officer in full uniform with badge and gun wearing his Trump mask inside of the polling location in the government center is a definite violation also claims that he had committed a crime, citing the state statute forbidding on and off-duty police officers from using his or her official authority or influence for the purpose of interfering with an election. But according to the Herald, that may not be accurate. In the On Monday, the Miami mayor and police chief announced that they were deploying a plan. Oh, oh. On Monday, the Miami mayor and police chief announced that they were deploying plain clothes officers near voting sites after receiving an unusual large amount of emails and messages from voters who said that they were worried about violence and intimidation at any Miami of four voting sites. Also on Monday, an on-duty also on Monday, an on-duty police officer was spotted standing with his arms crossed at the entrance of the JFK Library at the city's largest voting site. After seeing a photograph, the election official had called the staff at the library and the officer had moved on. Either way, violated the policy of the Miami Police Department and the department said as much in a statement released on Tuesday. At the Washington Post reports that the Miami Police Department policy states that officers should avoid all religious and political discussions or arguments and shall not interfere with or make use of the influence of their office for political reasons, nor shall they take part in any political activity while on duty. It is unclear what repercussions the officer will face, but Miami's mayor also condemned his actions and said in a tweet that he is under investigation and disciplinary measures will be taken. Next particular story, here we go with this. Uh-oh, retard alert! Uh-oh, retard alert! Okay, so how much of a penis do you have to be to wear in which your whole police officer in your whole uniform at a polling place where you're supposed to be protecting and you have a pro-Trump's uh, face mask on, um, letting the people know who is voting for Trump and people who are voting against Trump, uh, 
who you stand for as a police officer. When you're supposed to be non-biased because you're supposed to serve whatever president, uh, you know, is in office at the time and whatever mayor is the mayor of the city in which you serve and whatever governor is on the state. Doesn't matter. You're supposed to serve them equally because you are supposed to be non-partisan. Uh, but the fact that you walk around with a goddamn uh, Trump face mask on so everybody can know that you're a big ah. um, I guess it made you feel proudful. Now, my only issue with that is uh, if you're going to violate and terminate others for doing that or turn people away from wearing t-shirts and face masks and things of that nature that have like I can't breathe and Black Lives Matter if you're going to turn them away and you're not going to actually uh, have disciplinary actions that stick and that are substantial against this officer then we have a problem then of course we're creating a whole nother set of uh, rules and boundaries one for another I think this particular officer personally should be uh, penalized completely. And if that means uh, losing a job or uh, having to go on leave without pay, then he needs to do something. Oh, hell no! Because that's ridiculous. Um, it's already enough that we have to sit here and worry about degenerates running around here with uh, loaded ammo to fire upon people or just to intimidate folks from voting like we are back in the 50s and 40s when people wanted to actually vote and they were met with intimidation uh, at the polling places this is crazy and i really don't i don't give a fuck about how anyone feels i think this is um another sign again of defunding police departments because they are in the police department the same kind of trumpist attitudes are in the police department and they need to be gutted out and the only way they need to be the only way that you can do that is you sorry but you got to wipe everything clean have everybody take different type of tests given by people who can pinpoint people's biases and things of that nature and you do a whole different type of recruiting test that can actually pinpoint people's prejudices and you understand that therefore um, they either have to then do something else go to some other training or just be terminated altogether because this is it's just too much I mean how much do you want somebody to play in your face and say well no I'm not biased. I mean, I like Trump, but I just don't, you know, I like his policies. Get the hell out of here. The man's a whole racist. And you like him, then you're a racist too. And you can be black and be, you know, there's, there's, uh, racism is, of course, a systematic system, but there's people that can be bigots. You can be black and be a bigot. You can be of any race and be a bigot. It's not, you know, it's not an uncommon thing. Rudy Giuliani might star in one of the most awkward scenes in Sasha Baron Cohen's new Borat subsequent movie film, which is to be released on Amazon Prime on Friday. The Guardian first reported that Giuliani is interviewed by Borat's daughter, who poses as a conservative reporter, who brings him to a hotel room where he reclines on a bed and seamlessly puts his hand in his pants only to be interrupted by Cohen's Borat's character. She's 15, he says. She's too old for you. Cohen screams and waves Giuliani off his daughter, who is played by Maria Baklavova. Giuliani pointed out that he was fully clothed at the time and explains that he merely was tucking in his shirt and not doing anything awkward. Story. Uh, the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, um, got caught out there. Um, talking about red-handed or his hand in his pants. So anyway, with this story, uh, Giuliani was met by a conservative.
excuse me, a conservative reporter who was fake, um, basically filming for one of those uh, Borat films. Um, you know, the, the actor, he acts like he's from a different country, a reporter, and then he finds his way interviewing top political figures and people in Washington, not knowing who he is, thinking he's a real conservative reporter or whatever. He asks them dumb questions and make them do stupid stuff. Um, years ago, he made uh, one of the state uh, legislators uh, run around in his underwear, so much so that he had to step down from his position. Uh, but this time, he got who else but uh, Rudy Giuliani, old count. Dracula himself looking like oh, deaf, looking like Igor or something, just crazy. But anyway, so uh, the young woman said she was a conservative uh, reporter and she wanted to interview him. And he then uh, interviews or does this little interview. And uh, after the interview, somehow she winds up trying to unmic him and he's laying on the bed now why uh, why what other reason would this man be laying on the bed if she was trying to unmic him all he needed to do was either sit in the chair he was sitting in or just stand up the fact that he was laying on the bed is already problematic we all know what he was thinking That's exactly what he was thinking. And, um, of course, the actor came in and said, no, 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 she's too she's too old for you. She's 15. And all this other kind of stuff. And then he, of course, talking about some, oh, he was tucking in his shirt. Uh, nothing nefarious was going on there. Absolutely not. This, that, and the other. Now he says that that whole ploy was so people can ignore uh, Hunter Biden's laptop and what was found on Hunter Biden's laptop to then talk about this whole scene. You mean the scene where he was trying to get some from a reporter? Damn! Where you was trying to pull out your little thing thing? Because oh. you was trying to get some poom poom? Oh. Yeah. Damn, son, where'd you find this? I guess that's what everybody would say once you pulled it out. Like, I guess. Who, who cares? But anyway, yeah, Giuliani was trying to get him some and uh, got busted because it was fake. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But of course, Giuliani is nothing but a Looney Tune. <laughs> so, of course, oh, he no. would say that it had everything to do with uh, Hunter Biden. But newsflash for Giuliani, yet again, Giuliani, Hunter Biden's not running to be president. Hunter Biden just happens to be the son of Joe Biden. Just like Donald Trump Jr. just happens to be the son of Donald Trump. But the difference between the two is Donald Trump Jr. is just as much as a... Why are you being a dickhead fool? Stop being a dickhead. As his father. Why you being a dickhead fool? Stop being a dickhead. So it makes them one and the same. Yeah. Yeah. Just let that sink in. Giuliani tried to get some bang bang from the reporter. And didn't he just recently get married? Bruh. Yeah. You stupid. Yeah. Hey, you can try to explain that one away, but no, there's no explaining that. No explaining. <laughs> Bruh. That's just crazy. You just got busted. Just admit it. You got busted. You got busted with your hand in your pants, trying to show that little young reporter what you was working with. Shit. Yeah, dropping bombs on him. Yeah, I guess. Better be careful though, you don't want your girlfriend. Bitch, I hope the fuck you do. You'll be a dead son of a bitch, I tell you that. Cause that would have happened if you would have really tried to go full gusto. <laughs>
And once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification.